Hey there, sorry I'm a few minutes late. I was having difficulty with the tagging system to try and tag everybody. So if you signed up to have me tag you in this and you didn't get tagged, it's because it wouldn't let me tag you. So uh, I think we have to be friends for me to tag you. I'm not sure. So uh, I will research that and find out, but my apologies if you didn't get your tag, I will figure it out after the, the, uh, the, live okay so today we are going to talk about the energetics of getting to ten thousand dollars a month in your business now you know ten thousand a month is sort of a general guideline i'll talk to you a little bit more about what that means as we go through the process but for now this is what we're doing so let me start with uh starting out to uh like one to two thousand a month you can basically do that just by, you know, stumbling through life and talking to people. You can get to one to two K a month without too much machinations, right? And that's where most people who are in startups really kind of get stuck because they, they have some experience, they get things to work and then boom, everything falls apart and they can't get it to go any further. And part of that is to, to get from that one to 2K a month to about 5K a month or whatever it takes for you to break even on your life, to make ends meet, right? So just enough to pay all your bills and run your business, okay? That's the amount that I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm gonna call it 5K because you know I find that for a lot of people, that's what that number is. But to get from the one to two to 5K, what you have to do is you have to first really be clear about who your target market is. And I know this sounds like traditional business coaching, it's not. Um, but you have to then bring yourself into alignment with them energetically, okay? So you have to know who your people are. And so what I mean by this is you have to be really clear about who the people are who are interested in what you do. So if I were to talk about who my people are from this group, it would be uh, spiritually minded entrepreneurs who are mostly women, not always, but mostly women. Uh, they are 30 to 55 on average. They are empathic by nature. Uh, and so... Uh, they tend to be codependent, they tend to be uh, over givers, and they tend to be under earners and in, in terms of where they start. Okay, so now if you've gotten further along in your business and, and you're, you're up and running, then, then the dynamics are going to be a little bit different. But I'm talking about that zero to 10,000 range. So for the people who are in this area, this is probably the stuff you're dealing with. If you're above that, then you'll have a different profile and I'll cover that when we do the next one. But uh, this is the dynamic. And so if you feel like I've just described you, well, congratulations, now you understand what it's like, okay? So the, the clearness of getting your target market defined is super important. And when you can really understand who your people are, then you can bring yourself into alignment with them because you then are the person that they want to spend time talking to or, or listening to, right? Because you're speaking to their needs, right? That's, that's bringing yourself into alignment with them. And there's an energetic alignment that goes along with that. Uh, but it's, it's mostly about just being able to be clear. And one of the things I wanna say, <laughs> And this goes to the next point, which is the, the other piece you have to do is you have to release your monetary codependence with your target market, okay? So if you have ever done a sliding scale, this is what I mean, right? Monetary codependence with your target market is what we're talking about here. If someone, if you are thinking about how you're pricing your products and you're saying, well, I, I can't charge that much because my people can't afford it. Then one, either you're picking the wrong target market 
or two, you're being codependent and you have no idea what they can afford and you're just assuming that because you're struggling that they're struggling and that's not an appropriate thing. Or both, right? And so what you have to do is you have to let go of your monetary codependence and you have to be able to let them be the you know, be the decision maker in their own lives and be responsible for what they can and cannot afford. It's not your job. They are competent humans capable of doing their own thing and they can run their own finances. It's not your job, okay? So if you are finding that you are under earning, this is probably one of the, the pieces there. And there's the, the piece about under earning is also, uh, there's another piece to that, which is, are you trading part of your value for validation, okay? Because what happens is that that's, that's where things go, right? You have to um, look at whether or not you are trading some of the money that you would normally charge them for them saying, oh my God, you're so good at this, I love you so much, right? That's another piece that happens in this price point, okay? In this income level, right? So once you can get through those stages and you know you may have some personal blocks in here somewhere along the line too there may be some fear of being seen and things like that that may have to be addressed but again that's personal and where that where that comes in is dependent upon your personal story but usually it's something we have to address um but you know your your mileage may vary but this is how it generally works now once you get to that making ends meet mark where you've you've paid your bills at home you've paid your bills at the office and now you got nothing left at the end of the month now you have to get to that next stage which is typically the the next stage will take you five to seven thousand dollars over that mark and so we're gonna if we started at uh five thousand as our break even then that would take us to ten twelve thousand dollars right a month now to do that you have to unwind that trading value for money piece because if you're doing that, you are not charging enough. And so it's about raising your prices to be in alignment with your value. And so part of this is about really acknowledging your value, really acknowledging what it is that you bring to the table because in the earlier stage, you have a very hard time acknowledging your value. And so now you have to own it. Now you have to say, yep, I am worth this and probably more. And I, you know, you've gotten past the codependency with your, your prospects and, and what they can afford and so on. And so you've gotten to that point. And so now you're at the acknowledging your value piece. And, and here's the key, here's the kicker. You have to be open to receive it. And that is a complex issue. That one really gets a little weird for people because it's all bound up in do I am I lovable because oftentimes business owners who are empaths will have smushed together the issues of money and love and the amount of love you're willing to receive is the equivalent of the amount of money you're willing to receive and so if you've got a limitation on there you're going to find that you're going to have to address that and then in order to get to that next level and so the, it can get kind of sticky in here to get to that, that point from where you're making ends meet to where you're getting comfortable, right? And part of that also is whether or not you're allowed to be comfortable. If you came from a challenged childhood where you were constantly on edge and where you were always having to see, you know, if you were gonna be attacked emotionally or physically or whatever, then you may not be giving yourself permission to have relaxation space, to have free space, because you might feel like that would make you lazy or that would make you not ready for whatever might come at you. And so that can actually create its own challenge to this as well. And so when we go into this work, a lot of it is about really taking a look at what the inner belief structures are, what the, what the assumptions about what it is that you're doing are, and how you're going to move through those. So 
These are the primary issues. As I said, your mileage may vary depending upon what your personal issues are, but these are the primary issues. So identifying your target market and bringing yourself into alignment with them in, in terms of what you offer, in terms of how you present yourself, in terms of, of how your energy is and, and how you align it with people. Releasing that monetary codependence which keeps you from charging what you're worth. And that also requires releasing uh, the idea that you need somebody to tell you you're good at what you do, because when you do that, then you don't charge as much because you're asked, half your payment is validation. And then you have to open to receive and be willing to let that in and acknowledge the value of what you do in terms of how the impact is that what is the impact that you create on the people that you're working with and how does that impact their lives and their businesses or whatever it is in, in terms of what you do. And so those pieces are super critical for being able to get to that 15, or I'm sorry, 10, 10, $12,000 mark, right? Um, and then, you know, there's other pieces and parts that can go into this too, in terms of whether you're t t thinking tactically or strategically and how you've designed your business model, right? Some business models are just not robust enough. I had a conversation this morning where the business model just was not robust enough to ever get to that level of income. And so we had to look at restructuring the business model. And so, you know, there are other things that go into that as well, but the energetics of it are what cause those things to happen, right? When you're not, when you're not running your business from your adult self, sometimes our inner child is running our business, especially if we were asked to be very responsible as children. If we were asked to be more responsible in life than we were expect, than should have been reasonable to be expected for a child of that age, then oftentimes our inner child is running our life and therefore they will be running our business too. And so when your inner child is running your business, you tend not to ground things in reality. You tend not to uh, create structures that will support a larger construct, uh, a larger business that are scalable, that have sufficient robustness to them. There's lots of pieces and parts in here, guys. That's what I'm trying to tell you, is that as we get into this, we're going to talk a little bit more about exactly how this impacts, but um, there's a lot. And so <laughs> this is just a, a taste. If you have any questions, please uh, ask them in the comments. Otherwise, I will talk to you again at the end of the week. Have a good one.